Thousands of people are without power this evening after an atmospheric river hit parts of California on Tuesday. The power company PG&E says it could take until 10 o'clock tonight to bring power back. The company is also calling it the worst system-wide outage in a single day in 30 years. It's caused people to run their homes on generators and many businesses simply to shut down. Some businesses have brought in refrigeration trucks to try to stay open, though. PG&E is assuring customers they have more than 1,700 crews, including some from other parts of the state. They are repairing damage mostly caused by falling debris. Kind of disappointing. I, 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 I don't know this for a fact, but I get the idea that there's been a lot of deferred maintenance, and so uh, there are numerous telephone poles that are tilted up there, and I think they're trying to work through that. At last check, more than 22,000 customers were without power. Before this situation in California, I had not heard of an atmospheric river before. And meteorologist Corey Thompson is here to help us out. What is this and what does it do? Well, have you ever heard the term Pineapple Express in terms of weather? Yeah, I've heard that before. Okay, that's what an atmospheric river is. So okay. we've kind of given it a new name. I think that movie kind of ruined it for meteorologists, <laughs> honestly. But it's it is fair. basically a river of moisture. Now it's not as dense, of course, as a real river, but it's a channeled path of moisture in the atmosphere that's in the sky instead of on the ground. And so let's let's take you through it. It approaches the coast of land, which in this case is California. It's about 200, 400 miles wide, and it is flowing inland on the atmospheric flow. Now, when it hits mountains, that air gets forced upward. And as it does, it forms clouds and showers and thunderstorms and some areas of snow, too. If it's cold enough in the atmosphere, then tons of snow falls mm. with this. We've seen both rain and snow with these recent atmospheric river events. And if it is a particularly strong event, given the right conditions and the right time timing with all of this can produce intense amounts of precipitation and strong mm -hmm. winds like we've seen over the past really two months in right. the California area. So we've been covering all the flooding and all the snow events that have been going on in California. Mm -hmm. How is the atmospheric river impacting California right now? Well, it has, going, it has been affecting it earlier. Right now, we're kind of in between, but notice all this moisture out in the central Pacific crossing right across Hawaii. That's why it's called the Pineapple Express. Low to the north, high to the south. In between it, the winds are channeled and moving to the northeast carries that moisture with it. So as we go forward in time, this is Tuesday. They're expecting another set of More precipitation rain. to move in, mm -hmm. and that's where they're going to see maybe two to five inches. Now, that is paltry compared to the dozens of inches of rain they saw recently, but it's still significant, especially Especially for areas that are already waterlogged. So is this something that can happen any time of year or why are we hearing so much about it right now? They can, but typically for the west coast of the United States, it's more common in winter. The atmospheric flow and the jet stream is further south and it's right along the California coast there. But as we head toward the summer months, we see a shift in that flow. It doesn't necessarily mean that they see completely dry air over California, but there's nothing to act on that moisture. It's not forcing it upward. And so thus they stay dry during that time there. We have a lot of moisture, as you know. We do. Summer in Iowa. Why don't we have something like this, or do we have anything comparable? The only thing I can think of that would be comparable is if we get a warm front right nearby and then we get rain to the north of it. Training thunderstorms. Think of it like that, kind of, okay. where we have something forcing we the air upward. Those. We do. <laughs> forcing the air upward and it just keeps raining and raining. Usually okay. our systems are progressive. We get a line of storms moving through, dumps heavy rain quickly, and then it moves on. But we don't have this kind of continuous push of moisture that's going straight up and causing those showers and storms. One fun fact, though, these atmospheric rivers, even though they do cause problems when they're intense, they're responsible for a good share of the annual precipitation in California. They're necessary. We've knocked the drought out in good portions of the state there due to these events. So it has been beneficial, even right. though there has been bad side effects too. Now, the most strong events can have almost 15 times the output of the, the mouth of the Mississippi and the Gulf of Mexico in terms of moisture. That is a ton of water. That's why we've seen a ton of snow and rain. It is. So silver lining again that the drought there is gone, yes. but we can probably shut it off. Yes, they could use a break <laughs> at this point. For the people of California. Thank you, Corey. Yep.